Hey everyone, welcome to the Futurum Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst, Founding Partner at Futurum Research. Excited for this episode of the Futurum Tech Podcast interview series. I have Ashley Still, Senior Vice President at Adobe, joining me today to talk about a tremendously big announcement that the company made last week, the acquisition of Figma. But uh, before I dive in, because I'm really excited to have this conversation, I want to do a quick introduction to Ashley. So Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, very excited to to have you. I'm glad you were able to join. I appreciate Adobe and the partnership uh, of putting you on this week. It was a big week. It was an exciting announcement. You had earnings. Of course, earnings were very much muted by this announcement, which kind of took front and center stage. It was a really exciting announcement. Um, before I go into this, can you just kind of give everybody the a little bit of the background, Ashley, on yourself and the work you're doing at Adobe? Absolutely. Happy to. Um, and yes, uh, everything, uh, you know, uh, everything feels uh, inconsequential when you announce a transformative acquisition like we did. So um, so uh, my role at Adobe is to lead uh, marketing, growth and partnerships for the digital media business, which is Creative Cloud and Document Cloud. And that is all of our um, uh, categories uh, around creativity and documents, whether it's photography, imaging, illustration, video, animation, 3D, and of course, PDF. Um, so I think a lot about our business strategy and growth, which is one of the reasons why I am so incredibly excited to be here today and talk to you about Figma. Yeah, it is really exciting. And growth is really uh, one of those things that has been a little bit tabooed in the larger market right now. You and I have had the chance to have a couple of conversations offline behind the scenes. And I figure I'll bring this right out to the front for everybody that's listening in on the show. A year ago, an acquisition like this would have probably been lauded. Everybody would have been very excited. No one would have questioned the size of the deal. Uh, everybody would have just said, great company acquiring a super exciting fast growth startup. Now, when you and I spoke offline, you, you said something to me about rare companies. That ended up making it in some form or iteration into my market watch op-ed, where I basically said, um, you know, there is a very justifiable way to get at this valuation. And despite the fact that the market has kind of grown, gone a bit cold on growth, cold on uh, basically anything that's not earnings and driving earnings, which is all short term thinking, um, isn't necessarily popular. But Adobe is clearly thinking bigger than that. So maybe I'm leading the witness here by asking, well, let's just start with that question. Why Figma? Why now? Yeah, um, it is always a good time to build the, the future, right? It is. Um, and uh, and as you said, no two companies can do what Figma and Adobe can do together and bring, uh, you know, a, a decade of innovation um, to market uh, as a combined entity. So first, let me start with Figma and why Figma is unique. Um, Figma is in an incredibly fast growing category that's adjacent to Adobe's core business. So um, Figma really saw the opportunity with product design as software grows in importance and more companies are building software applications, you know, mobile applications, digital experiences. Uh, you know, five years ago, you might have had 50 or 100 engineer, engineers and one designer that's thinking about what the user experience is going to be. And obviously, that's changed as user experience becomes more important the, the product design part of software development has exploded, right? Those ratios have decreased. In some cases, now there's one product designer to every five um, front-end software engineers at some companies, right? And so as that's happened, this is just a huge market that's growing incredibly quick. And, um, and Figma uh, really pioneered web-based design as, as part of this new market. And that's unique in, in a number of ways. Everybody has access to the source of truth. So it's not just product designers that are working in Figma, it's software engineers, it's um, product managers, it's product marketers, it's everybody that's, that's part of the ecosystem of making sure that that user experience is gonna be the best that it can be before they start writing code. Um, 
And so again, it's very complementary to Adobe's existing portfolio. Photoshop is for image editing, right? You don't design software applications in Photoshop. Illustrator, Illustrator is for vector, vector graphics. You don't design um, software applications and digital experiences in Illustrator. And But a lot of times people are using Photoshop in conjunction with Figma or Illustrator in conjunction with Figma. So they both built a great product that is also a phenomenal business. They started making money in the back half of 2017. And as we stated publicly, they crossed over 400 million and they will cross over 400 million until ARR expected this year. Um, that is rarefied air, right? In any business to grow that fast. And they've done it through mostly viral growth, right? Because, because of, of the platform that I talked about, everybody's working in that product and inviting each other in um, that's part of the team. And they just, they land in companies and they grow. So it's a growing category. The product is great. Um, the way that the, the business grows is largely viral and, um, and they've continued to grow. And what you said has been a, a challenging environment over the past year. Uh, you know, again, as we said publicly, they doubled the business um, in the past year. So uh, unique company, unique product, unique market opportunity. Yeah, and I'm going to come back to economics a little bit because I have some perspective on that as well. And uh, so I, I want to circle back because I think that's a lot of what draws drew some of the ire. I don't think anybody's looked at Big Mom and was like, oh, what a, you know, what what is that? Why would they buy that? I think everyone's like, that's a super hot viral technology, I think coming up a valuation, and again, more because of the con the external macro market conditions. Yep. And like I said, we'll, we'll touch on that. But competitively, that's another thing that a lot of uh, commentators came out with. And, um, you know, well, Adobe has a solution for this. And, uh, you know, XD, and of course, I don't think it was focused on the same way uh, Figma was focusing on it. But is this a competitive issue? Um, you know, is, is there any real reason that regulators would need to look at this? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clearly an adjacency. Um, you know, we did have, a, you mentioned Adobe XD. Um, that was a product um, that we did enter the market with in the product design space, but a completely different product approach, desktop application, really focusing on the design part versus really where Figma pioneered is the collaboration. And, um, and that's why I've, I kind of discussed in detail the, the criticalness of the collaboration for product design where yes, you need tools to lay out the buttons and the images and the graphics, but it's really about making sure everybody's on the same page and Adobe XD does not have that capability. It, it um, uh, you know, efforts that we, we made to bring collaboration to a desktop application really were not successful. Um, and Adobe XD is, is really in maintenance mode today um, for, and we continue of course to support customers that are using that product, um, but mostly they're doing offline just design work. Um, and, and so it's really not, a meaningful competitor, as I said before, uh, the core of o Adobe's business is really in um, uh, image editing, photography, illustration, video, and all of that's complementary. Those are all really important um, uh, media types uh, that are incredibly complementary to to the to the design kind of layout platform uh, that Figma has built. Yeah, I, I didn't even comment on the antitrust environment and that's something by the way Ashley I love to comment on because it didn't actually bubble up in my opinion to being worthy of putting too much opinion on one because of what you said not really um, you know this wasn't like you had a huge market share and you're buying the rest of the market share it's also a fairly new category um, yes. and there's nothing really to stop other companies from coming up with their own versions of collaborative design environments so it just didn't appeal to me as, as some things do. And there's some definite things out there that need to be looked at. I just don't necessarily think this was it. So I want to come back to the, the evaluation for a minute here. Um, you know, I, I did a little bit of research and in my Market Watch piece, I, I looked at some of the various cloud economics and you mentioned the 400 million number. 
But I think there was two things that really stood out to me about the economics and why this valuation could work. Um, one was the speed of growth. So with, with cloud uh, scale SaaS, the real growth isn't to look at from the inception of the company, but it's usually to look at from the first dollar of revenue. Um, and from the first dollar of revenue, the path to this 200 and now 400 million was one of the shortest in history that I could that I could identify. Yep. An average company to get to about 10 million, I think, was like about five years, 10 million in ARR. So just the, you know, and I looked at over 70 companies and I put this all in the market watch piece. You can hit that in the show notes. I'm not going to read the research back to everybody here. So that was one. And the other was the you said this earlier, but just the wild organic adoption, meaning, you know, if you listen to any SaaS sort of VC that'll come in and question a company about valuation, funding rounds, they always look at things like burn rate and customer acquisition costs. And so when you have a company that's already, I believe they're net cash flow positive, if not um, profitable yet, and they have something like a 90-ish plus percent um, operating margin with almost all organic, meaning they're not spending money, they're not buying ads, they're not paying for billboards all over San Francisco, this is viral. And so yeah. they've gotten this far with no real cost. So the bottom line contribution with Adobe behind it just seems like it could instantly be a really high value, which makes that 20 billion valuation start to make sense, even if it is a extremely high multiple in the current market environment. Absolutely. And and to add a few. So I agree with all of that. And uh, and as I said earlier, you know, they made their first dollar in 2017 um, and and it was not in you know, it wasn't, wasn't significant. Um, and uh, and and in 2022, they're on track to, you know, to end at over 400 million. Right. That is incredibly fast growth. And to your point, they're not doing it through a you know massively scaled enterprise sales force, right? That's that's uh, is one way to think about cost, and they're not doing it through billboards and um, and uh, you know uh, lots of performance marketing or things like that. They're really doing it through the power of the product that they've built. Um, another statistic uh, or business metric that we shared is their net dollar retention is over 150%. And again, for a SaaS company, that is just world-class, right? Um, uh, in terms of both their ability to grow the business, but also retain um, uh, customers as well. So to add a little bit uh, as well to the valuation, there are a couple of, so that's the, the core business. There are two other um, uh, areas of kind of uh, uh, financial and strategic value that uh, that are clear reasons why we believe this is such a transformative and exciting uh, combination for doing the market. Uh, first, they actually also have a, a second product called FigJam, and that's a whiteboarding application. And they were able to look at the use on their platform and how many types of personas were using um, the product. And they were using it for design, but they were also using it to ideate and share ideas. And so they actually created a new product that's built on the same platform. So it inherits all of the web-based multiplayer um, uh, environment collaboration, but it's simpler and it's purpose built for ide ideation across teams. And, and that, again, that's a whiteboarding application called FigJam. That has seen very good early success. Um, and again, we're, we're not uh, sharing statistics publicly, but a very number of their customers have already adopted that new product. And we see opportunity to, to actually integrate uh, that FigJam whiteboarding product across the Adobe portfolio, whether it's Acrobat or, or, um, or creative applications. And so there's opportunity there. It's a very large market. If you think about whiteboarding, you know, Apple has a whiteboarding tool. My, Microsoft has a whiteboarding tool. You know, it's becoming more and more common, particularly with hybrid work. And this, um, uh, what, what we see happening is clearly a, a collapsing of productivity and visual communication. 
And so having not just this amazing um, uh, Figma design product, but also the whiteboarding product within Acrobat or Adobe Express, which is our very you know web-based uh, template and content driven, simple way to create visual content for, you know, mere mortals like, like me and, and maybe you, um, you know, all of, all of those applications can benefit, customers can benefit from having this whiteboarding capabilities, part of, uh, those product offerings as well. And then third, um, we, we want and, and will and, and can co-create, um, new experiences and new capabilities, bringing Adobe's decades of media experience, whether it's imaging or illustration or video or 3D um, and, and building, again, new capabilities on this web-based collaborative platform. And that is what we call collaborative creativity. And that is, you know, the explosive growth, again, that we can unlock and help Adobe capture our 60 some billion dollar TAM even faster, right, is driving innovation, new applications, you know, imagine um, uh, if, if, uh, you know, all of these design teams, product design teams had all of Adobe's fonts and stock available within Figma design. Imagine if we created, you know, a multiplayer version, you know, image editing application. All of these things are what we we can create and innovate together, and and that leads to, you know, the the conversation that you and I had last week, which is there are no two companies that can build that future together other than Figma and Adobe, given the complementary again like media and technology expertise in AI that we have and the web-based collaborative platform that they've pioneered. Well, you you uh, also are a mind reader because you did get a little bit ahead, but I appreciate oh, you not jumping. No, you jump from kind of the deal and then talking about synergies, which I was going to mention just that very idea of, of, you know, in most deals, there's something called goodwill. Um, yes. or there's other sort of synergistic values. And of course, with the best companies, you're going to pay a little bit more for that. That's the, the you know, when a company's growing fast and productive and doesn't necessarily need to be acquired, this is not a company that was going to probably need to go for a down round. This is a company that had probably a lot of options and Adobe looked at it and said, it might be expensive now, but how expensive would it be next year? If it keeps growing like this, let's do this now while it's, while it's um, ripe and while we can get our hands on it. And you also talked about those synergies, which I was gonna ask you about. Now, kind of a last maybe question, just as you mentioned this whole idea of ushering in this new era of collaborative creativity on the web, and you explained it a little bit, but just for the audience, could you maybe provide a couple of examples of what you really mean by a new era of collaborative creativity? Because uh, how does this differ, you know, from what we might be seeing from your your Zooms and Slacks that are also offering, what you know, like, et cetera, et cetera, like there are people are saying this is already out there. Sure. Um, and yes, thank you for the question. Clearly, you know, I don't think anything like this is is out there or could be out there um, uh, without Adobe and Figma. So uh, so as I mentioned before, um, first, uh, there's there are many things that we can do to streamline the workflow of these product design teams, right? Uh, they're they're working in Figma, but again, they're popping out to Photoshop or popping out to Illustrator to edit an image or um, uh, create a graphic um, or you know into After Effects to create just that right. Um, animation and effect that they want to to represent in um, in the experience, and there's a lot of back and forth and kind of lost productivity in that. Or also, you know, um, font licensing is still really complicated, right? And and Adobe actually owns, you know, twenty thousand plus fonts. And you know, if we if if we did you know, is our step, nothing more than bringing fonts and maybe simple imaging and vector graphics workflows into Figma design, um, we would bring a ton of innovation and, um, and productivity unlocks to that community. So that's a very specific example of what we can do and how we, and, and that in, would enable us to, again, capture the product design TAM and grow their business even faster. Um, as I mentioned before, 
um, they have not only a uh, product design application, but also a whiteboarding application. And, uh, and both of those are often used for presentations. And as we see this kind of collapsing of productivity and creativity, as more and more productivity is visual, right? Here we are, right? We're not, you're not just typing a research report, you're doing a, a video broadcast, right? And, and every um, communicator, because of social media, and because of the internet is commu and, and even just within companies, they're communicating more and more visually. And, uh, and again, being able and they're collaborating as they do that. So being able to add uh, presentation innovation and whiteboarding capabilities into our Adobe Express product that's purpose built for communicators into Acrobat, which is obviously used broadly um, by communicators. That's actually a, a significant um, uh, area of value expansion for, for our customers and an and area where we can bring innovation. And then, as I mentioned before, um, you know, specific examples of future applications or future workflows that we can bring is really reimagining our core categories, right? Um, what, what is image editing going to be in five years? right? It is going to be web-based. It is going to be collaborative. And again, if you think of the best minds in imaging at Adobe, working closely with the best minds in web-based um, uh, design and collaboration at Figma, inventing uh, the future of image editing, inventing the future of photography, inventing the future of illustration, that's where I get just incredibly excited and why we think this is about the kind of strategic future of the combined company uh, uh, and, and kind of going back to kind of synergy and valuation, which are, which are uh, tightly coupled. Um, we think this just makes all the sense in the world for, uh, for Adobe and the market, right? It's how we can bring the most amount of innovation to our customers. Yeah, I appreciate you breaking that down. Like I said, I think when you're, doing some category creation, where you're bringing together categories, people being able to discern, differentiate is, is really important. So Ashley, I really appreciate you, uh, you know, taking the time here. Um, you know, before I let you go, anything you want to ask the analyst? Yes. So, you know, I've been doing a lot of the talking, Daniel. What do you think? What do you think about the acquisition? Well, if I can uh, maybe replay, it's only been a week and my memory's still fresh. Um, I remember you pulling forward the earnings, which generally always means something big's about to happen. And I remember seeing that announcement and first glance, I'll be candid, I said, wow. <laughs> you know, I said, wow. And the wow was a kind of a double entendre because the wow was like, wow, what an amazing acquisition. And then it was, uh, Ashley, it was, wow, what a price tag. And then I had to kind of, you know, I had to, do the, you know, get the critical thinking brain. I had to take a step back because the media, you know, we're in this middle of this crazy rate hike cycle uh, interest and, and we got inflation and wars and, and earnings being, you know, everybody's downgrading the, the future earnings and I'm kind of trying to digest it all. So I stepped back and I looked at it through a kind of two lenses. I said, one, um, you know, your firm has a very strong track record of making good acquisitions and thinking big picture. And I, you know, so I, I kind of zoomed out and I said, is that happening here? And all I could think is absolutely. I mean, this is a technology. We all know the direction of collaboration. We know creativity. We know that the digital experience future is going to be massive. Even things like, um, you know, immersive augmented and metaverse are going to be collaborated upon in a environment like what Figma is doing. And of course, um, you know, you really uh, cemented home for me when you mentioned the idea of a rare company. It even made it into the headline of my, my market watch piece is that you're buying a rare company. And I think rare companies, um, you know, you don't wait for good market conditions to make great deals for your business. And so, you know, me being someone that likes to straddle the line of technology and markets, that was kind of my initial assessment. As I went down, I listened to some very credible SaaS uh, thinkers. I listened to like David Sachs. I was listening to his analysis on the All In Pod himself. You know, when I listened to the smart people in this space, the feedback was largely more positive. So of course, you know, you got the naysayers, you've got the perma bears and all the people right now that are just believe that the world is coming to an end. 
my belief, Ashley, is collaboration is the future. Um, immersion and, and creativity are going to drive differentiation. We see and hear constantly companies saying, we want to compete on the experiences of the future. We want to differentiate on experience. Well, let's be candid. It goes back to what I call the 88 rule. 80% 80 of uh, companies believe they're differentiated, but only 8% of their customers do. It's going to be in collaborative environments using the most uh, prolific and capable tools that companies will truly build differentiated experiences. So you have the tools. And if their growth rate continues within one or two years, as I said in my piece, everyone's going to look back and said that wasn't such a bad deal. And in fact, some are even going to say it was brilliant. So if you don't have some haters and you don't have some naysayers and you aren't taking some risks, you're probably not thinking big enough. Um, and most of the time, the, the, those people catch up with you when it's too late. And hopefully for you and, of course, for Adobe and all its customers and for the overall sake of the market, all these things I'm saying are right. And you guys have a really bright future ahead of you. Yep. Thank you for that. And um, and certainly, you know, when we announced our uh, intention to uh, take, uh, you know, all of our business to subscription and accelerate innovation, you know, way back in a dec about a decade ago, um, that was also met with great skepticism. And like we did then, what we will do now is just execute um against we're we're incredibly excited about the strategy um uh you know and and again it, it will the proof will be in the in the execution so we look forward to it well I, i'll tell you this and we'll end on, on on kind of a note and it's not to knock my profession but you know it's very easy as an armchair quarterback to sit here and tell every company what they're doing right and doing wrong especially when you know, you're looking very short term and you're looking using um, very, you know, you're using historical data that is very rarely truly comparable. Um, the conditions of the market require CEOs and leaders like yourself to take big risks, um, of course, with very, uh, very analytical and thoughtful. And of course, with your customers in mind, um, hard to bet against Adobe. Company's done a lot of things right for a very long time. Great leadership. And I continue to believe uh, it's got a bright future and this market, it will pass. It always does. So yeah. Ashley Still, Senior Vice President at Adobe, thank you so much for spending time with me here on the Future of Tech Podcast. This was a lot of fun. I actually went longer than I usually do because you had so much good stuff to say. So I hope I can have you back sometime soon. That would be great. Thank you for having me today and uh, look forward to the next time. All right. So everybody out there, hit that subscribe button. Check out Ashley. Follow her across the interwebs. If we can find those links, we'll put them out there for you. Um, I'll share the show notes. Uh, that'll also include some of my commentary, the Market Watch piece I referred to a few times so that you can read on that as well. Lots of good inputs and analysis out there on this deal. For now, I got to say goodbye. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all really soon.